Welcome everyone to another performance clinic. Today's topic, Dynatrace apps for ServiceNow Paris. Seems we're going to France today. Uh, I, got, I had to make this joke, sorry. Uh, I, have, uh, I have two of my colleagues here, Jay and Wolfgang. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hey, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah thank you for, uh, for um, you know, actually bringing content to me because uh, this just makes my life so much easier. Um, I want to remind everyone, for those of you who this is the first time, uh, you have the chance to ask questions. Um, use the question feature in Zoom. If you happen to watch this offline, I think the best way is to go to answers.dynatrace.com. There's a great discussion forum and you can put the questions there and then I'm sure Wolfgang and Jay will be there monitoring or you see their names. These are the two experts. I'm pretty sure you figure out how to reach them also through email or LinkedIn or any other means. Um, as I said, this will be recorded. It will be up on YouTube as well as on Dynatrace University. That's university.dynatrace.com. If you're completely new to Dynatrace, definitely make sure you're getting your own SAS trial uh, or get in touch with our team to see uh, how we can also deliver Dynatrace as a managed offering. And uh, well, last commercial on my end, as you can see on the last link here on the bottom, uh, I'm also running a podcast called Pure Performance. And we would always love to have new listeners because we talk about performance, DevOps, and all sorts of things. So uh, Brian Wilson, and I would be happy. But now, the better topic today, or the more interesting topic why people are actually tuning in is Dynatrace apps for service now. Guys, I think I had you on a performance clinic a couple of months ago, but it's been, it's been a while, right? Yes. So uh, maybe before we kick it off, because obviously there's updates here, a new release from ServiceNow. Um, folks, Wolfgang, for people that don't know you, can you quickly remind people what you do at Dynatrace and uh, what you're responsible for? And then we do the same thing with Jay. Sure. So um, I'm, I'm uh, part of the product management team at Dynatrace and primarily focused and owning the topic of uh, Davis, our AI engine, and with that responsibility also the delivery of incidences uh, is under my ownership, and with that uh, also the ServiceNow integration uh, that we are talking uh, of today. Perfect. And cool. Jay? Thanks. Uh, so uh, I'm Jay and I work on the extensions team. I'm a solution architect and I'm uh, mainly responsible for any sort of upgrades to the Dynatrace service or integration, um, helping customers customize the integration to their business needs. Uh, and that's pretty much what I'm doing currently. Um, yeah. Perfect. So um, again, a reminder, if you have questions, put them in into the question feature, I will moderate. I try not to interrupt your flow, but in case there's a question coming in that I think it would make sense to throw at you right away, I may raise your hand or start talking. So don't get... Uh, scared when you all of a sudden hear my voice again. Uh, but yeah, I encourage everyone to ask questions. But now, I think Wolfgang, you wanted to start with an overview and then we go into the live demo piece. Yeah, thanks Andy for uh, the introduction. And I'm, I'm jumping right into the topic uh, of uh, what's going on in Paris actually. And uh, despite the fact that we already did some sessions on uh, our ServiceNow integration from uh, Dynatrace to ServiceNow and how uh, both platforms work working together perfectly. Um, Today is a good uh, point of uh, again reminding of uh, what are the changes in the upcoming or in the in the current certified Paris release and as there are some major changes uh, in the way we are integrating with ServiceNow um, it's a good time to do a, another refresh on, on that topic, I would say. Um, so what's about? Um, well, um, our integration uh, between uh, Dynatrace and ServiceNow um, already exists several years now. So it, it uh, come to be uh, pretty mature already. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we of course follow and keep track of changes uh, in the way ServiceNow models their CMDB. Uh, specifically, um, they introduced a new uh, service uh, model standard, actually, um, uh, the common uh, service uh, model standard. And uh, of course, uh, we, we are in close contact with them, with the ServiceNow PMs on that topic. And we try to uh, integrate and, and offer uh, a seamless integration between both platforms. So meaning 
Uh, in sync with the ServiceNow PMs, we try to follow as closely as possible uh, with the recommendation that ServiceNow gives us. What is the best way of integration? Uh, what is the common model uh, that we should follow? Uh, and of course, again, to keep up uh, with the ServiceNow release um, um, and to certify our current uh, application release for the latest uh, Paris uh, ServiceNow release. So going from New York over Orlando to Paris now and to land safely basically with our application update. One, um, one topic that I would like to uh, highlight here because it, we spent a lot of uh, time talking and syncing with ServiceNow specifically on that topic is that Dynatrace is now one of the first um, monitoring vendors uh, that offers a, a so-called ServiceNow service graph connector um, plugin or application in the ServiceNow store that allows us to seamlessly integrate SmartScape information coming from Dynatrace into the CMDB guided by uh, the new service, uh, the common service model that ServiceNow uh, provided to us. So we are very proud of the fact that we are one of the first monitoring vendors here uh, that are specifically, specifically certified for that service graph connector program. And um, ServiceNow announced that and released that uh, just uh, a day before. Um, so what are the major changes? What, what's the news actually on, on a very high level before Jay jumps into the technical details and gives you a live a demo of that? First of all, we heard your feedback and also the feedback from ServiceNow, of course, uh, that we have to split the functionality uh, of our app. So the functionality within our integration app grew uh, over time, over the years, and uh, it was already a bit large and um, customers and users of our integration told us, well, we want to um, install just one part of the functionality. Uh, without going with the rest. And uh, for that purpose, we did split our functionality into two new applications. One is dedicated for the incident integration, uh, which some of a uh, subset of our users are using and are focused on, while the, the other one is called the service graph connector for Dynatrace, which specifically is dedicated to uh, syncing CMDB kind of smartscape information into your service maps and into the CMDB. So um, as a benefit here, uh, as a clear benefit, you can decide which part of the functionality you would like to have. You don't have to go with the rest of the functionality, just take what you need. Um, and you can of course um, uh, upgrade to, to the second application uh, once you experience that you need that uh, functionality as well. Um, there, is, um, there are a lot of uh, new features as well. Uh, Jay will show them. Uh, one of the highlights that I like most is uh, the guided setup process that allows you to, um, to do a frictionless onboarding. So instead of uh, tinkering around with settings that are necessary, you have a wizard-like experience um, where we guide you through the onboarding process. Um, again, we comply and we are certified uh, for the new uh, common service data model. Um, so that, that means uh, within the service graph connector, uh, we follow that uh, guideline of integrating our services with the ServiceNow common service data model, in short CSDM. 2.0, which was uh, released by ServiceNow. And of course, both applications are certified for Paris release. Um, again, I mentioned that uh, here you have a link to the white paper uh, coming from ServiceNow. What is the service, the common service data model? Uh, it's basically a guideline of ServiceNow, how you, you model uh, a service infrastructure uh, in your CMDB. Of course, uh, if you look into your CMDB, you will notice that you have around 3000 different CI types. Uh, and so ServiceNow comes up with some white papers, some common modeling strategy, 
how you can organize um, your service infrastructure in an organized way uh, and use uh, a common structure and common types for organizing um, all that service infrastructure within the ServiceNow CMDB. And that, that it's about, and we are closely following that uh, guideline and that uh, common uh, data model. Um, you see that uh, in, in a very high level, I don't go into the details here, it's just a screenshot taken from, from ServiceNow, uh, where you can see that the application service here is at the center of uh, managing technical services. So there are uh, technical service offerings, technical uh, services, modeled applications, servers, IoT, and so on, all ending in application services. On top, you have the business application uh, and the business capability. Um, and the common service data model is all about how you model that and how you integrate external information sources into that standardized uh, CMDB uh, modeling scheme. Uh, and with that, I would like to hand over um, to Jay in order to give you a detailed introduction into um, uh, the features and give you a live demonstration. Cool, and before we switch over, just as a reminder, Jay, you can already go ahead, just as a reminder, put in your question. Wolfgang, one question already came in. You mentioned the CSDM white paper and you mentioned that there's a link um, I, I didn't see it on the slides, but I, I just on the site Googled it uh, yes. and it's very easy to find CSTM 2.0 white paper. Right. It's linked yeah. underneath the screenshot that I took in the uh, slide deck. So ah, okay. you just have to click on it if you share okay. it. Just yeah. click it and you, you're guided through the uh, white paper then. Perfect. Then go to university.dynatrace.com and we will upload the slides as well uh, next to the recording. That's awesome. And then a second question just comes in and maybe Jade has actually something for you to cover also in your presentation. You talk about the, uh, the CMDB integration and this might be a new user to Dynatrace. The question is, is Dynatrace SmartScape pulled or pushed from ServiceNow and if whatever direction, how often does it happen? So I think people are interested in, in how, how this, this actually works. So sure uh, so the yeah it is the so the uh, cmdb integration or the service graph connector for dynatrace is currently a pull from service now um, you know from service now as a scheduled job which um, which pulls the dynatrace api every 10 minutes but this is an option which we give to customers that they can set it up um, to what they need but the optimum for optimum performance 10 minutes is the best um, uh, scheduled time for running these jobs perfect and for incident, it's a push from um, Dynatrace to ServiceNow. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Uh, so before I get into the weeds of it, um, of what is coming, so these are the new features which, uh, you know, uh, Wolfgang just explained, like, uh, how it is going to affect us, how it's going to impact the new integration or the new version of this integration will have some more. Uh, features and some of these are like, you know, we're separating the application as Ulberg mentioned and the reason why it happened uh, into incident and service graph connector for Dynatrace. Um, also, we are reclassifying some of the Dynatrace applications or application services. I'll get more into details of it uh, as we go through um, uh, the integration. So from within Dynatrace, uh, I have a like a, sm a small flow chart which would show how the incident integration works. Um, so currently the incident integration um, uh, has Dynatrace problems. So when problems get detected in Dynatrace first, they get pushed into ServiceNow. But uh, during that cycle, they get, go through a script addressed API, which is like a, a listener script on the ServiceNow side, which takes up all the information coming from Dynatrace and processes it and pushes it into a problem import set table. Like it's called problems um, and it's coming under the Dynatrace menu as you'll see. And then it creates an incident based on whatever uh, the transform map um, uh, uh, you know, conditions are on the, on the ServiceNow side. And for this, you need to go and download the store app, right? So within the store, there's some few changes coming. Um, so the in integration itself is gonna be divided into two. So this is how the new store uh, for a uh, new app for the Dynatrace incident, incident integration will look like. And um, this is more on our, uh, you know, like this is what will happen once the release goes live. Um, 
Also, the service graph connector for Dynatrace. This is how the app will look in the ServiceNow store. Currently, uh, the ServiceNow store has only one, which is Dynatrace integration. That will change to service graph connector for Dynatrace and instant integration. Um, going into uh, more of how it will look like in your uh, service now menu. Uh, when you download the instant integration, this is how it's going to look like. You'll first go through a guided setup, which is a very handy uh, sort of uh, implementation setup, which is offered by ServiceNow itself to sort of help any sort of implementation steps instead of going through a, a blog or setup instructions. Here you can jump right into it uh, through the Dynatrace instant integration. Um, the very first step, for instance, is configure the Dynatrace credentials, right? And it gives you some of the steps. It doesn't connect you directly to the environment because that is something which, um, you know, for every customer, the Dynatrace tenant is different, the URL is different. So we um, have to literally give this out of the box in this way uh, where you can actually go to your uh, Dynatrace setup page. So in Dynatrace, if you go here, uh, you go into the settings, um, you go into the integration page and click on problem notifications. Uh, and here you can set up notification for ServiceNow, right? Here you can um, enter your ServiceNow credentials, uh, the instance name, the identifier or on-premise. If you have an on-premise instance of ServiceNow, then you have to enter the full URL. Whereas if you just have a SaaS instance of ServiceNow, then it's just an identifier of that instance. Um, and you have to create a user uh, and a password. So basically it has to have these um, uh, permissions which are needed for this integration. So this is something which also needs to be set up uh, before you enable the instant integration. And some of the available placeholders are, you have the problem ID, which is something which is unique to Dynatrace and that we capture across in ServiceNow as an incident for any sort of Dynatrace problems which are detected uh, in Dynatrace. Um, you also have the state, um, which is open or closed, and then you have the tags, you have the problem severity, just like as it was in the previous versions. Uh, it pretty much remains all the same. Um, and then once you switch on this send instance into ServiceNow ITSM, you will start having uh, incidents sent across. So you can also test it just by clicking on send test notification and sends across uh, the, um, uh, the problem detected in Dynatrace across to ServiceNow. Uh, also very important alerting profiles here, you can have multiple alerting profiles. What it does, alerting profiles help you in some way to uh, segregate the incident based on a management zone, let's say, or any type of event severity filter. Let's say you want to only send availability events across the service now. You can do all that through an alerting profile in Dynatrace. Um, going back to service now again, um, you know, here in the setup, uh, as I said, you know, this was the very first step configured Dynatrace credential, which I just showed. And then you can go in and also click on the next step, which is creating the settings page, which is also the same way if you click on the menu settings, it will just go back to the same exact page. But with the guided setup, you know what the next step is. I don't have to tell you, I don't, you don't need to read a blog, you just have to come here, click, um, you know, the guided setup uh, in, a, in a certain, in an order and you'll be able to get to it. Um, the very first setting automatically resolve instance if the monitored problem is resolved. I have seen with several customers that this is a very important setting where um, if you, do you want Dynatrace to automatically resolve those incidents or do you want to manually go and resolve those incidents? Very important setting. Um, if you check this on, which is currently unchecked, but uh, default out of the box, but you need to check this so that you can get that uh, additional level of comfort where if Dynatrace resolves the problem, it would automatically update that in ServiceNow also. Um, we also have a um, common uh, or a primary key which we use, which is called the correlation ID in ServiceNow. But we have something called an entity ID, which is a unique ID for every um, incident which is created on the problem uh, or every problem which is created on the dietary side. We kind of capture that information across in correlation ID field. But you can change this field to something else if you want to have a different placeholder for storing that unique ID for that ins for that problem which is raised in Dynatrace. And also logging verbosity. Um, this is mainly used for developers uh, if they want to change or if there's an error 
um, it would actually log into the system logs or the error logs in ServiceNow, or you can put it in debug mode. If you're a developer and you want to kind of get some more information, uh, you can add some debug statements in the script or in the transform map and capture some more information. Um, but there's more on the development side. Um, going on to the next, right, the problems table. Um, now, this is where the first flow, as I showed you here, um, it comes in and um, gets all the information done into the problems table, which is an import set or a staging table. Um, and if I go into each of these problems, it will show you all the information which Dynatrace sends across uh, for that issue, like the environment, that is the Dynatrace tenant which it's connecting to, the state of the problem, um, which is uh, either an open or a close. A close here is mapped to a resolved uh, state in, uh, for the incident in ServiceNow, and an open is, is mapped to a new state in ServiceNow. Um, and you have different kinds of data coming in through, and the problem ID is what I was talking about before, which is a unique ID uh, for that specific problem, and it's mapped across to a correlation ID. Um, and also tags, very, very important. Uh, tags help, uh, a lot of customers have come across and asked me about how to uh, have the category or the subcategory or the assignment group for the for that problem which is coming in because this is something which Dynatrace doesn't know like this is information which is very much exclusive on the service now side because when an incident comes in it has to be routed to the right teams it has to be going into the right bucket for the category or subcategory uh, for this reason you can use tags right tags are very very um, easy to implement on the Dynatrace side you can just go in here. If you go on a host level CI, and if I click on any of this uh, CI, you can have tags which are here. So this is what I mean by tags. Now these are the key value pairs which help you to uniquely identify a CI or group a bunch of CIs together um, based on certain, uh, like in just for here, if you see the category, it's demo video. But some, something very simple where you can set up these tags on the dietary side, uh, and you know, once we ingest this information, you can decide the assignment group based on these tags or something which you can set up on a service now based on the CI, which is getting impacted with this problem, right? You have three CIs here, which are getting impacted. Um, and uh, the other thing is these are synthetic test CIs, there's application CIs, there's service CIs. All these are different kinds of um, Dynatrace entities which we have on the Dynatrace side. So on the, on the Dynatrace side, you have the hosts, you have the transaction and services, you have synthetic monitors, then you have applications. And um, so currently we um, have the application level CIs getting integrated, the transaction and services, the host and the technologies which are um, uh, called process groups and dietaries, right? So these are the four entities which you currently integrate into service now. Uh, there's in the future a roadmap, we do have synthetic monitor CIs to come across, but all that is um, there, any sort of cloud technologies, all that is there in the roadmap to get integrated. Um, so a lot of good stuff to come in the future uh, for this integration. You'll have way more information in your ServiceNow CMDB, and you'll be able to route all your incidents across to ServiceNow easily. Hey, Jay, um, um, there's just one question that came in. Um, sure. The question is because you talked about the tags. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that the tags on the Dynatrace side that are associated with the problem will then also show up in the tag list on ServiceNow? I think that was the question. Correct. Yes, it would. And that's what I showed here is that in the problems table, we have this tags column, um, okay. you know, uh, which stores that tag for that CI. So if a CI is already tagged, you will get that information across Perfect. when that CI gets impacted by the problem. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Um, so yeah, and then uh, correspondingly, you have an incident created. Uh, of course, it goes through a transform map and gets this incident. And this is how it all looks across. You will have the uh, details of the incident or the problem. Uh, it exactly looks like how the problem looks like in Dynatrace. So if you'll have an open and a close, and you'll get all that in the activity stream on the ServiceNow side. Um, so let me move on to the Dynatrace CMDB integration, which is now newly renamed as Service Graph Connector for Dynatrace. Uh, when you download this app from the store, uh, this is how it's going to look like once you download it in your ServiceNow instance. Same thing, 
we have a guided setup. Uh, we go through uh, this whole guided setup uh, because it, this CMDB integration is a little bit more sophisticated. It has a lot more steps across um, which you need to um, implement before you get it all set up. So these are the steps, you know, um, for existing customers who already have this Dynatrace integration. Um, the very first thing you need to do is to uninstall the older version. The reason why, because there's some sort of a clash between this version of Dynatrace because it's a separate application. So it's also a separate scoped application. It's a different scope than what the previous scope for this application was. So it will be a separate application installed and you don't want to um, applications which are doing CMDB integration in your instance. So that's why we advise, please do ins uninstall the older version. Uh, however, just make sure to take a backup of your older version. Uh, some of the code which you have, or if you have customized it, just take a backup of those customizations so that we can so that you can implement that also in the newer version of the app. Um, and yeah, Jay, there's actually ahead. one question that just came in. Mark is asking, so if I uninstall, do I lose any previous data or, or not? I think no, was... the data won't be lost. You will still have the data as is. Um, uh, there'll be small changes which might come in, but uh, that will the integration should handle that on the back end. Uh, but yeah, data won't get lost. Okay, perfect. Um, I mean, and, and recommendation is, of course, you know, implement this in, that, in your dev environment and just make sure everything works as you need. Um, but even in the guided setup, now you don't have to uh, necessarily go to a support page. This is the page which we used to have all the instructions how to set up, but that's uh, instructions have all moved across to the guided setup. So you can go in, configure the credentials in service now. Uh, basically, it means that just to connect which Dynatrace tenant you want to connect across to. There's also the help page on the site, which shows you that if you're a SaaS customer, how you need to put your uh, environment details or how it will look like versus how you are, if you're a Dynatrace uh, managed tenant customer, right? So these are all um, additional details which will help you uh, in this guided setup. So please make sure to look into it and read this when you're doing your guided setup. Um, and also going back, right? I mean, uh, in, in, in the service graph for connector um, integration or the CMDB integration, uh, which was the older name for this, um, you know, in the, pre, in the current version or the previous versions, um, you also have to install certain uh, plugins like the configuration manager for scope tabs. You have to check if the, now this is a very important one, check if the directory discovery source is set to SG directories. Now, uh, this is something as a recommendation which came from ServiceNow is to change these, um, the source to service graph hyphen Dynatrace, so that's why we changed this uh, discovery source. Now, this should run automatically if you're a new customer, it should automatically set up uh, with a fixed script on the background which runs. But if not, then uh, this is where I've added this step so that you can go in and check, hey, do I have a source which, uh, you know, goes directly to the choices table and checks for that SG Dynatrace. Uh, you know, it's, so here you can see it's already existing. For existing customers, this was, the old value was just Dynatrace. So just make sure, um, change it either manually if it's not already done, if not, then if it's already there, then just, you know, delete the old values. So that's something very, very important for the, um, for the, you know, the existing customers who will um, onboard to this new uh, version. Um, going back to the setup again, I do want to show a little bit more on what else would be changing. Um, and so the scheduled job, which we used to run before, uh, we, it, used, it was already activated on the background. We didn't have this additional step to sort of set it up, right? Um, so if you go in here now, uh, I directly go and take you into the schedule job. This is a schedule job. It will be inactive by default. You need to activate it. So if I click here or edit this record and activate it, and usually keep it as 10 minutes. Now that's the uh, standard value. Please do not uh, change this value too much. Like maybe eight minutes is fine, but below that, um, you know, there is there could be issues where there'll be overlap when this schedule of runs. Um, you know, it has an eight minute gap between each run, and if that uh, is less, it might overlap and cause issues with synchronization of the CIs. So, very much recommended to keep it as is in ten minutes, but make sure to run it active 
run it periodically um, and you know make this and this is an important step again which will change for um, any sort of new customers who are onboarding as well as existing customers who already had the previous version of the scheduled job which was called dietary cmdb sync um, it has a different name um, those will all get deleted once you uninstall the older version of the app um, but just make sure to do that um, so that's an important step um, in this integration and I'll go back again into the um, garage setup because this will give you a little bit more information on what you need. And then the settings page, which has always been very important. Um, you can go in and configure the settings or you can click on the settings here. Either way, both of these uh, will you know, lead you to that integration page. Um, and here, um, now all these settings are exclusively for CMDB integration. So you can have custom names. So previously we used to allow um, getting custom names for all the different entities like hosts, process groups, services, and applications. And those custom names could also be integrated in ServiceNow. Um, but now with this new release, what our aim is also that if let's say you have multiple discovery tools, you have uh, ServiceNow discovery or SSCM or some other monitoring tools also bringing in information and you don't want duplicates, right? Um, at the very host level, this is our first step towards that, is to achieve that through discovered names. So we just allow only custom names for process groups, services, and applications. From this release, hosts will have discovered name only. You cannot um, migrate the custom name across the service now. It will always pull in the discovered name. So this way it matches what ServiceNow Discovery does, or if SCCM does, like all the discovery tools will have a standard name for the same host. So as to prevent duplicates from happening, and something which is very important for quite a few customers who have both these discovery sources or multiple discovery sources to discover their um, CIs. Um, and then uh, the same logging verbosity, more for developers in case they want to like debug any sort of issues, correlation ID remains the same. These four checkboxes below, uh, activate to import dietary monitored host slash servers. Uh, these are all need to be checked uh, so that you can uh, import all that um, CMDB data from dietary into service now. Uh, for process groups, for services, for applications, all these will merge. And once you have this information um, and the environment information, of course, which tenant you're connecting to, you will have all the CIs coming into the host um, you know, if it's a host level CI process group, uh, again, on the process level CI. Now, if you observe closely on the top, it maps to application. Uh, something which I wanted to also highlight on the mapping. Um, this is how the mapping will look like uh, with the new release. Applications will be mapped across to application services and service now. Services will be mapped across as application services and service now too. Um, this was something which we have done or changed from the previous version where applications were mapped to business applications um, to in, in adherence with uh, common service data model uh, 2.0, which is you know like a common CMDB framework which helps in mapping all different entities for service now products like third party integrations so that they all map to um, the classes or the CI classes which are offered by ServiceNow. Uh, so this sets up a standard. So if you have Nitrous integration and you want something else to also map, you know exactly that if you follow the CSDM 2.0 data model, you'll be able to map them accordingly as to what ServiceNow recommends um, and not just custom classes, you know, which is very different in how it all works for service mapping, for creating relationships, all those things are uh, very helpful with the, this sort of data model, what we have. Um, and processes or process groups in dietary map across to as application level CIs. Um, and this is again, something which you're working in the roadmap for where we will have more accurate classifications for these processes. Um, and then host map to Linux, AIX or Windows Server classes across in service map. Any questions, uh, Andy? Um, and I can... Uh, see further yeah uh, actually I wanted to wait until later but now as you interrupt me um, so the scheduler this is just a confirmation I think what you said but the schedule is really the custom code that runs on the service now side that depending on the settings is then pulling in the different entity models from Dynatrace on a scheduled basis Correct. and yes. I think you said 
don't put it lower than 10 minutes because otherwise you may have overlaps because it's obviously there can be a lot of data coming in. So Correct. I think that's, yes. that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the other question that came in, this was earlier when you were mm -hmm. on the Dynatrace side on actually the, uh, the, the, the incident integration, there mm -hmm. was a little checkbox on that notification that said uh, send event to service now item. Uh, I know this was not, I mean, maybe you could just want to quickly uh, yeah, sure. cover yeah. this for people that are not familiar with this. Sure. So here, I mean, also uh, Dietary sends across a lot of events which are connected to a certain problem. So within the problem lifecycle in Dynatrace, there's multiple events which come across. So you may have one CI which is impacted or the impact tree might change over the course of that problem, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of events are generated during. So for one problem in Dynatrace, there could be like maybe a couple or maybe five, maybe 10 events coming across. And you can activate that just by clicking on this um, you know, switch here, which starts sending events across to service now item module or the event management module across immediately. So there's no, you don't need a store application for this. Um, and that's how it works. So it's, it's very simple to set up, but as soon as you set up, you can have events flowing across the service now. Now there are several customers who also use events to generate incidents. So instead of having instant integration, they just have events integration and then use their own event truths um, across LR truths to make sure that they can filter even further on how they want to generate incidents mm -hmm. of what kind of events should become an incident or not. So yes, very, very important uh, integration. Uh, if you have an item module for, of course, just for this the requirement is that you need the item module, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is a paid module across the service. Okay. Maybe you, you could quickly jump over to service now and show the uh, event. Oh, sure. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, so on the event side, uh, you have to just go to all events, uh, which is the event management uh, menu item or module. And here you can see all the Dynatrace instance. So the source here is uh, Dynatrace. If I go into the event, uh, into the record, you can see that you know it's coming across from the, this is basically the CI which is sending across or the impacted CI which has this events being generated. In this case, there's an error rate increase and that's the type of event you have. Um, uh, and this goes a little bit more granular. There are different kinds of event types within Dynatrace. And this sends you accurately like what that event kind of event is in that error rate right here, application error rate um, increased. Um, and also it has message key, which is a unique key. Now there's one difference here that we have alert correlation rules. Um, you know, you can have multiple alerts being generated by the same event and we want to group them together. So we also provide a alert correlation uh, rule to group them by problem ID and not by message key, which is a unique uh, identification for that event, but the problem ID will keep them all together and uh, you know differentiate between the primary alert as well as the secondary alert. Also, additional information has more information on the correlation ID, what kind of CIs were affected, whether it was a root cause or not. You know, you can also use this flag to um, determine which is the primary CI uh, which caused the uh, incident or the problem in dietaries. Um, and other information like severity, the environment name, the environment ID, uh, the problem description, to which problem it's connected to, you can check all that within the event. Um, and also if you go to the alert level, um, alerts, you can go in and there's several ways of, you know, you can also see in the list view that all the alerts are connected to an uh, incident. Maybe could uh, navigate to the alert intelligence module that would be sure cool. sure sure yeah yeah so the operator workspace right which is like the new form of showing these events and alerts and group them by business criticality or severity or service groups is something which would be very useful for any sort of um, operational people who are working on um, checking what instance have been opened Let's see if it has, yeah, it's coming up. Uh, okay. So here you can see around 629 service, which is more like an event dashboard. There's like a new event dashboard, which was an, uh, which is still there, but um, I don't know, this is giving some issues, but um, 
Sorry, I need to dismiss. Just give me a minute. Uh, so you can see right here, they're grouped by business criticality. You can also group by severity um, and it all changes accordingly, uh, whether it's a minor event or a, you know, a major. Uh, but if I go into one of these, right, uh, it could show you at that service level, how it looks, you know, what kind of uh, incident it generated, the more details about the event. Um, also the service maps, right, very important. Um, that part, which I think is something which I would, uh, I just need to show you also that service level, we are having horizontal relationships. So I can go in there, but this is more on the alert side, how the event integration works. But if I go in further through the Dynatrace app, um, for application, I'll just show you a high level view of the whole service map, how it works. So we also mentioned that application services are now, um, no, um, application from Dynatrace are mapped as application services. So each of them will have an entry point. So if I go into uh, uh, just a simple, uh, uh, try easytravel.com, if I go in here, you should be able to see the view map. Now, this is the application level entity on the on the dietary side which maps as application service if you go into the view map uh, this will have an entry point it might have multiple entry points um, based on you know if it's going through the easy travel web server in this case easy travel is just a website and then it's trying to go in and check what the services which are impacted by this application so if i go into the dependency view uh, this is what is similar to what it will look like in the smartscape. Now, this is how it all looks. And, you know, you can see there's horizontal relationship between the hosts. So a Linux server is dependent on a Windows. Like these are all relationships um, which go through the IRE. And again, there's another change where there's an IRE enhanced, which is being used on the ServiceNow side. Now, what it gives advantage over what the old IRE was in the existing versions is that it helps you to bring in all the payloads, uh, even if it's a partial payload coming across from Dynatrace, it may not have all the identification attributes which ServiceNow needs. It will still ingest all those payloads and let Dynatrace know, okay, hey, this is something which I need additional stuff. It also helps in preventing duplicates. Um, a lot of the duplicate issues are kind of resolved with this version, which was happening in the previous, some of the previous version for some customers, not for everyone. Um, you know, so a lot of these things are changing with this enhanced IRE, which is uh, helping a lot in terms of trying to fix some of these old erstwhile issues, duplicate relationship issues, which are happening on the on with this integration. Um, but in general, uh, if you see, this is a service map, the application service, there's connectivity to all the different application services. Um, and this will give you an entire uh, view of how a certain problem or a, a corresponding incident in service now is impacting everything across in your service map. Um, and also something which I have done for customers is to add more business service level CIs in here. Uh, and that can be done and it's a customization uh, we also uh, provide where we can add if any additional business services or technical services you want to relate to this existing service map which you sent across, um, this is also being provided by us. So that is something which is a custom uh, change. Um, further going in, I think I've pretty much covered most of the stuff, um, what's coming up with this integration. Um, anything else, um, Andy? Uh, can we just any other questions? Yeah, I mean, there was a question that came up earlier, but I believe you answered it uh, because the question was around migration. So, how do people migrate over? I think mm -hmm. there were a couple of questions, and I think you 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 said because there's a split in two apps, right? That's one important piece. Uh, but basically, just follow the the setup wizard now that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them requires you to uninstall the old one. Yes. Uh, which I think you also answered that you don't lose any data, but obviously if you made customizations, make sure you have uh, stored away uh, mm -hmm. your your stuff. Um, is there anything else to add from a, from a migration perspective that we may have missed? 
Uh, yeah, maybe the uh, licensing part. So the app in the store is free. Um, you know, from Dietary side, we provide it as free for you to download and use it. But uh, there's a certain licenses like the ITOM license. Uh, you have integration commons for CMDB, which is a new uh, plugin, which is already there in Orlando, but it's been enhanced further in Paris, uh, which will also be needed for this so that you can use the enhanced IRE feature, which I was talking about just a little mm -hmm. bit ago. Um, so yes, and uh, and and I think ITOM visibility license, some of the stuff which um, you know you may need for this uh, integration to work uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. But I think good news is, and also I think it showed on the marketplace, the mm -hmm. Dynatrace integration part is for free. Yes, um, and this is all free. All for free. That's all great, and uh, because it's just about uh, you know, and this is where you have. In all the plugin, what you need for the next release. So we have given that information here itself. So you should be able to see that in the store. Mm -hmm. So yes. Very cool. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. We talked about the scheduler, the white paper is also linked. That's all good. Um, no, I think that's it from the list of questions I have right now. Sure. And also, uh, I wanted to add this additional stuff like the event integration. If you want to enable like uh, the alert correlation rules, there's an integration enhancements document. Uh, you know, you can go in and download it from the ServiceNow store. So this will go in and, you know, help you do that stuff. So you have all that information in this guided setup. Um, so please do make sure to, you know, uh, give some time to go through the guided setup and uh, read the instructions. Very important. Very cool. 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 Thanks again. Yeah, maybe uh, Jay, if you do me a favor, go to the sure. uh, the last slide of the deck because I always try to make sure, sure. people get to see uh, some additional resources, and uh, then we wrap it up. All right. So, almost there you go. <laughs> Uh, so, folks, thanks for uh, thanks for attending. Thanks for the questions. Obviously, thanks to uh, Wolfgang and Jay for doing the presentation. There's a lot more content out there. Uh, if you are interested in um, any other dynamics related topics, as you can see, a huge list of links. Most important for you are the Dynatrix University, where the recording will be up, as well as the slides. The videos are also going to be on the user playlist. Now. There's going to be Dynatrace Go and the Dynatrace Perform coming up again. I assume both of you, Wolfgang and Jay, you will be involved either in Dynatrace Go, which are the smaller regional events, uh, or Dynatrace Perform, right? The people can learn more yes. from you there. Yes, exactly, yeah. And we also will have a blog for the release as well as, uh, you know, uh, for additional information. If somebody wants to read more on what has changed, mm -hmm. they can definitely access the blog. So yes, exactly. it will be there. And they will find the blog on blog.dynatrace.com, I'm pretty Correct. sure. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Perfect. Um, I also want to remind you, in case this is new for you, meaning new either Dynatrace or a new service now, and you want to kind of hear and see what else these two guys have been up to, if you go to the YouTube channel or university, I just checked it out, we had two prior service now performance clinics. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of material um, that you have shown. The last times, this was a great update for the new Paris release. And I'm pretty sure there will be more releases from ServiceNow and from you guys because you always keep up with what these guys are doing. I'm pretty sure I will have you back. Yeah, a lot of things are going on. <laughs> Thanks again, Andy. Thank Thanks you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.